ladies and gentlemen, now it's the middle of the summer, so I hope you're enjoying your summer breaks. I'm back in the workshop and I want to have a go at making a classical style nylon guitar. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you may remember that I restored this guitar. This is my 50 year old uh, nylon guitar. This is the first guitar that my uh, mum and dad bought me. And um, well, since restoring it, I have played and played it because I really enjoy it. Now, when I did the restore, you may remember that um, I think it's about an episode in and I realized it was all made of plywood and I thought, oh, why bother trying to restore this thing? And I started making all the jigs that I would need to make a new guitar. And then I decided I'd finish that guitar. And I'm so glad I did because it is really nice. But it means that I've got all the stuff ready to build a guitar from scratch. So I'm going to film this as a like a weekly or a regular series and then I'll put the whole lot together in the end in a compilation. So I do hope you'll join me. But in the meantime, let's get going. Now I traced the shape of this guitar on a piece of wallpaper, took some measurements, then transferred that to the computer and drew myself a nice plan with some dimensions. In the restoration video, I made this former for bending the ribs. I also have this radius fixture, which I believe is called a, a Solera. Um, and uh, this will help me a shape the back and the top, but also hold, uh, hopefully hold it all in place. I have a book, Step-by-Step -step Guitar Making by Alex Willis, fantastic book for making acoustic guitars. A curving jig for the chop saw, so I can cut out all the curving that I need. And a homemade bending iron, so I can bend the ribs. Well, I think I've got a fair amount of tools here. I'm sure I'll need more as I go along. But let's look at the woods. Now I know I'm gonna get some comments to say, Dave, spruce, that's what you should be using for this guitar. Yes, now look, uh, yeah. Guitar building is a hobby for me, so um, yeah, budgets are tight. So I'm fortunate that every so often um, I'm able to pick up a selection of timbers and I'll be honest with you, I look for the ones that I I like the look of. And um, so I have a selection here. I've got some Sobrano, which I've cut into uh, thin strips, which would make a top or a back. I've also got some Walnut, which I have cut again into thin strips. That would make a top or a back. Um, I've got a solid piece of uh, Walnut here, so I could do something with that. Uh, I've got some uh, Brazilian Rosewood or Santos Rosewood. Uh, strips. Now I'd originally thought of using these as the ribs. I rather like that. Um, I'm not sure quite how it will go with the uh, Sobrano or the Walnut, but uh, it's a possibility. And I've also got a selection of uh, fretboards. So I've got some nice figured uh, Santos Rosewood there. I've got Sobrano. I've actually got a piece of, um, what is it? Olive. Yeah. So look, I've got a bit of a selection here. My initial idea was to use the walnut on the back, uh, create a walnut neck with uh, the Zebrano on the top and the uh, rosewood as the ribs. But we're gonna have to see, you know. I'm never sure if you get a clash when you use these types of woods, which is sort of a, a bluey brown and a reddy brown. Uh, of course, the trick is to put a bit of water on just to see what it looks like once you've done it. And uh, I don't think they look too bad personally, especially if you've got binding in between them uh, of a different colour. Um, yeah, so got lots of possibilities. Guitar building for me is very much a question of using what you've got and uh, I get the most satisfaction out of doing that you know turning things that don't seem to uh, go together into something that uh, does and creating a you know sort of a beautiful instrument from it so I think I've got enough to get going 
Before I start on a completely different note, it's the summer holidays and we've had our grandchildren stay with us for a few days and we've been building model aeroplanes. Now before they came I wondered how I could make wing structures that they could sort of stick tissue paper on and I came up with an idea. It's the guitar builders comes out in you. Basically I created a sandwich with um, a veneer of material on the top, a veneer of material on the bottom and some and glued in some slats in the middle and then I just sliced it all up on the bandsaw and ended up with these beautifully shaped ribs for the wings. So we had great fun making model planes although none of them flew. Oh well. Back to the drawing board. I'm going to start by preparing the wood for the top and the back. Now uh, I know this may seem ridiculous but I hadn't quite appreciated that it would be possible to create the back of an acoustic guitar from three pieces. I've always assumed that you just need two and that caused me problems because I couldn't cut the wood on the bandsaw. But of course once you can uh, make it from three it's no problem because my bandsaw will cope with this. So I have to thank uh, Gabrielle Retty for that, <laughs> watching one of her videos. Um, okay, so the first thing I need to do is to make sure these are all the same thickness. And for that, I've got to use an idea that I saw used by Daniel from Uquentor Guitars. Now Daniel appeared on the uh, Guitar Builders podcast uh, recently and he's got fantastic ideas about guitar building and makes fantastic guitars. So. Uh, why not pop along and have a look at that? But anyway, he puts the fence up on his uh, belt or spindle sander and, um, well, uses that as a drum sander. So uh, let's give it a go. Well, obviously that technique is not ideal when the board is bigger than the uh, the spindle. And um, well, there's two things. On the good point, it really does work. It, and it's uh, thinned all these down to about just over two mil. Uh, on the, um, the sort of the downside of it, please make sure you stand in a safe place because obviously they can shoot off if you're not careful. Right. Um, Okay, so I think I need now to tidy up the edges. Of course, the good thing about using this really highly figured wood is um, if there are any gaps, you probably won't see them anyway. <laughs> Uh, you're going to see that gap. Got a few marks down the centre there from the uh, sander there, but I've got to sand the whole lot down anyway. Uh, this is all going to appear inside the body, so uh, the good side is underneath. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Time to uh, glue it together. I'm using some candle wax on this bit of uh, MDF and I'm hoping that that will stop the glue sticking to the board. Well, let's put a bit of glue on this. I think this is going to be okay. I haven't got any special jig for this, so uh, I've used tape, um, but it, uh, all the glue seems to be squeezing out, so let's see what happens. Well, the spindle sander idea worked okay for the Zebrano, which tends to tear out on my thicknesser, but this is the walnut, and it is, does need to go down at least a, probably a couple of millimeters. Uh, and it does seem to go through the thickness of pretty well, so I think I'm going to use that to uh, trim these down. Now, 
Now I'll be honest, it took a few goes to get that right. Um, the thicknesser won't accept to board this thin, so you've got to put another board through and I was having all sorts of trouble. So I came up with this idea of using a very thin piece of aluminium, which is just stuck on there with double-sided tape. And that just um, stops the board coming off and it pulls the whole lot through. And uh, it's just enabled me to get this all down to two mil, which is really good. Um, so I've got quite a few sheets of that, I've got five sheets of that. So uh, once the Zebrano's dried, I'll glue that up. But while I'm at it, I might as well do the ribs as well, but I'm gonna need a longer piece of wood. So I've got my piece of aluminium with some uh, tape on the back, just some masking tape. I've got the, the wood with some uh, masking tape and double-sided tape on it. I've uh, burnished that down. So let's just stick this aluminium on there. Um, now what I do is I allow a little bit of sticky so that I can press the wood onto it like so. And uh, I've got to make the same mistake that I made the first time. And that is stuck this on without checking that it's lined up. So bear with me a minute. Do, 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 do. Piece of uh, rib. Right, do it properly this time. That's just the job. And you squeeze it together in the vise. Well, these two new little jigs or fixtures, whatever you want to call them, has certainly done the job. So just to recap, this is, I'll put this down, this is a thin piece of aluminium. It's probably less than a mil thick. It's probably 0.5 of a mil thick. Just stuck onto some plywood with some double-sided and masking tape. And to be honest with you, I could go with a slightly thicker plywood or MDF as long as it's something that's pretty stable. Um, and, uh, well, you just put your piece of wood on the board and slide it through. Make sure that the board is longer than the piece of wood to avoid snipe. But uh, I've got my ribs all cut down to two mil. I'm back in the workshop. I've given it a few hours. Uh, I've taken the tape off. Uh, fortunately, this didn't stick to the board, which was really good. And now I'll turn it over, so this is the side you will see, and I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to put that to one side and work on the walnut. Well, I've got five bits in all for this. Um, that one there's got a little uh, shake in it. Uh, so I'm going to move that one out of the way. That one's got some bits missing on the edge. Uh, but I've got three here, which I think are going to work pretty well. Um, if I can line them up. I think I'm gonna do something with this. So, uh, well, let's get planing them flush. So I'm looking at this uh, pattern and it looks really nice. But the question I'm asking myself is, Dave, why not put that piece there and then you've got some sort of symmetry? Well, thank you, Dave. I think that's probably a very good idea. So let's see if we can get this nice and flush. There is definitely something very satisfying about using a shooting board with a sharp plane. I'm getting very close. So the thing about this light wood, there's nowhere to hide. If it's not butted up, you will see it. Well, I think that looks rather pleasing. So it gives me some options about where I can cut the body shape out. So, uh, time to glue up. I'm just going to 
make sure that this board is clean underneath. Try and put those out in the right order. I'm just going to put a bit more wax all over the board. Now I'm shooting this video the day before we have uh, Gabrielle Retti on the Guitar Builders Collective podcast. So by the time I make my next video, I might well be trying a completely different tack, de depending on <laughs> our discussion. If you missed the discussion, please look out for the uh, Guitar Builders podcast and uh, go back and have a look at it. As I am sure it is going to be a really good episode. I think that should hold it down. So uh, we'll see what happens. Well, I've kicked the ball rolling, but I'm going to call it a day for this video uh, because I'm not going to have any time the rest of the week to uh, finish this. So, um, yeah, a lot to think about. <sighs> Sound hole design, binding, necks, fretboards, inlays. Whoa, it's going to be exciting. Hope you'll stay with me. <sighs> and just a quick plug. If you're going on holiday and you want a book to read, an exciting adventure, then please go along to Amazon and pick up a copy of my book, Entanglement by DK Dickens. I'll see you soon. Cheers.